Hi YouTube, this is Joe Calton with Calton Cutlery. You can find me on the web, caltoncutlery.com. So this is a video for the Volkswagen and knife enthusiasts out there. <clears throat> you guys know who you are. <clears throat> the old Volkswagen bugs. You can probably see mine over there, right? Uh, you know, we just got to love the dang things, don't we? I mean, I had, I don't know how many of those things when I was a kid. They were the cheapest form of transportation that I could find, you know. Um, I went to, to high school in the, uh, the middle 90s or so, something like that. Um, <clears throat> we never really had a whole lot of, of cash. And um, my father wasn't really mechanically inclined to be working on cars. I mean, he could change a tire and change oil and, you know, things like that. Um, but as far as, you know, like diagnosing, you know, a bad carburetor or, you know, a bad set of spark plugs, something like that, he, um, either he didn't really know how to do it or, uh, he figured his time was spent best elsewhere, you know, whatever it was, but, uh, we ended up driving a whole bunch of crap. <clears throat> Those things right there, I remember picking up a whole bunch of them. I remember picking up a 1969 auto stick. It was white. It had been in a rollover. When it rolled over, these things are so dang light, all it did was just crease the very top of the, uh, um, the roof over the driver's door. And I think there was a couple of scuff marks. That was it. The door still opened. It was that dang light that it just freaking rolled over and then came back up on his tires and then that was it. <clears throat> I bought it for 100 bucks because the guy didn't know how to adjust his valves and it ran like crap. So I showed up. We worked out a deal for the car. I uh, paid him, got the title, said I'll be back, you know, the next day to pick it up. <clears throat> Had a friend of mine drop me and my tool bag off at the dude's house and said, he, my buddy said, you sure you don't want a, a ride back or tow it? I said, no, I'll drive it home. He said, but it, it doesn't run very good. And I said, well, it will here in a little bit. Adjusted the valves. We uh, drove it home. I can't. I don't remember if it drove great. It probably didn't, but it drove well enough to get me home. <coughs> you know, there was a time that, um, you know, there's. I mean, we could ramble on for an hour about stories about those cars, right? <coughs> now, the story I'm about to tell you is that one. Well, I might as well take you in and show it to you. That one right there. You can't see a whole lot of it, but uh, this one right here is the first bug that uh, my boy and I bought when he was 11, something like that. So <coughs> I asked him what kind of car he wanted to share with me, um, you know, from the time he turned 15 until the time he turned 18. And he said, uh, no, nah, he said an old Volkswagen bug. And I said, really? I told him, I said, we're not going to do like muscle cars or anything like that, but you need a car to learn how to drive in and, you know, to, to get around, go back and forth to school, all that kind of stuff. And so, you know, we might as well share it. <clears throat> and he said, an old Volkswagen bug. And I thought, oh, my, I hadn't had one of those in a long time. So we picked that one up for a thousand bucks. It had been in a real bad front end wreck, and the front beam had been... Uh, crushed on the passenger side back about 30 degrees okay so the guy that we bought it from was a tow truck tow truck driver down in Colorado and when Vance told me that he wanted to share a bug with me my first thought was do we get a nice one and then just enjoy the car or do we get one that needs an awful lot of work because at the time he was into the video games and that's all he did was video game video game video games and I thought, you know, a car can be a powerful thing, you know. You buy the right car, and it can be a life-changing type car. The wrong car, it could be the life-changing car also. And I thought, you know, I need to do something to get him off them video games, and I bet you a car would do it. So I bought this one, and it was, it was rough. The guy said it hadn't run in, you know, however many years. Um, it had been wrecked. He picked it up. I think he had it for five or six years, something like that. He was going to turn it into a trike since it had, you know, front end damage. And then, you know, life got in the way. He never did do it. 
and so, um, uh, you know, he, he just threw it up for sale. So we picked it up, uh, went down there. He took, used his tow truck to pick it up and put it on uh, my flatbed. And then we brought it home. I think it was probably one of the proudest days in Vance's life, you know, because now he's got this car of his dreams, you know, on the, the bed of my flatbed trailer, you know, in front of the house. <coughs> that was at the old house, too. So <coughs> I had a two-car garage, but that was, you know, my knife shop. You couldn't get a car in there. So we ended up taking the front end off. And then um, when the front end, when the, the beam got hit, it got... It didn't just bend the outside, it bent the whole beam in. So when it did that, it crushed what they call the frame, uh, frame head, something or other. And so it crushed that back. So even a new beam wasn't going to fix it. So we had to cut the front of the frame off and then, you know, prep it and then weld a new frame head on to be able to bolt on a new front end, you know, and then rebuild it from there. And then, you know, had to go through and get the engine running and all that kind of stuff. While we were working on that, that front end, it's got kind of, uh, so instead of having, uh, so this is the regular bug, the Super Beetle has got um, actual coil springs and, uh, you know, shocks on the front for the front suspension. The standard bug has got these torsion bars and they're long tubes. You know, there's, there's one on the top, one on the bottom, and they are filled with these torsion springs. Now, you can tell because this right here is, these are them at full length, okay? So that is the, um, the full width of the front end of the car. Now, these little bitty divots right here are where your, <coughs> your, your arms go on to. And then these are supposed to be, a, you know, a, a torsion type spring, right? So we strip those, <coughs> strip this front end off, and I see the ends of these sticking out. And so I pulled one out, and I'm looking at it, and I'm like, you know, that would make really good paring knife stock or, or folding knife stock. And so the idea has been in my head pretty much since that day that we pulled these out. But honestly, I've struggled with pocket knives for so long, I didn't want to cut a whole bunch of these up and try to make pocket knives and then just throw the things away. So now that I've been working on pocket knives so much and I'm getting quite a bit better at them, I went ahead and took one of these springs out of Vance's first bug, 69, and then made it into a pocket knife and then put blue G10 scales on the thing to match the bug I'm driving right now. So how cool is that, huh? Um, the really cool thing about this is, is that the steel that's in these springs is already at just about the perfect um, hardness to make a pocket knife out of. It's just very slightly on the soft side. So what I did was I ended up, uh, this is uh, another one of them, I clamped the dirty end of this up into the vise with that much of it sticking out, right? Grabbed the end of it with uh, that big old um, adjustable wrench, grabbed a hold of it and flex that thing to 90 degrees and then straightened it back up and then flex it to 90 degrees again and then straighten it back up. Now on the second flex you could tell it was weakening and I think the third the third one it weakened quite a bit so then just had to you know work it back and forth a little bit and snap the thing off. Well if you look at it it really does not have that bad a grain structure in there and it was certainly strong enough. And then you take a file and you go to cut it and it, the file won't cut that. So I thought, well, heck, I'll just go ahead and use the heat treat that's there already. So pretty much what I ended up doing is I took my, uh, my medium Skagel pattern <coughs> and I had to buy um, some carbide drill bits because a file won't cut this. So a normal drill bit's not gonna drill through that. Now, I only need to drill three holes. You know, I need to drill a pivot pin hole, and I need to drill two holes in, a, uh, in another piece for the spring. So I used a piece of the wide one for the blade and a piece of the narrow one for the spring. Um, this one right here, I'll have to change the pattern up just, just slightly to make this spring a little bit straighter um, because these have got, they're not flat. They've got like a little curve on the ends of them, but... That's neither here nor there. 
anyway, so drilled those those three holes, and then you know, I mean, you can't use a, a hacksaw or a bandsaw to cut it because a bandsaw won't cut it. So you end up having to you know chop your pieces down with an abrasive wheel. And uh, you know, and I wouldn't use aluminum oxide belts on it, but now that we got you know ceramic belts and everything, they cut hardened steel just about as fast as they cut softened steel. So that part doesn't really matter. And you know, I mean, after seeing that that spring do that many ninety degrees, I didn't even retemper the, the the back spring material at all. So what you've got there is a very cool memory knife. This one, of course, is special to me because, um, you know, it came out of the, the car that Vance and I uh, bought together. That one will eventually run again. Um, I think <coughs> he's got to finish welding in a couple of pans. We've got another body for it because uh, he ended up getting hit also. So it had been wrecked in the front and it had been wrecked in the back. And, you know, there was quite a bit of rust there. So I was like, well, we can cut the front of it off, cut the front of the body off cut the back corner of the back off and then weld new on there and then cut all the rust out and then patch it back together but by then there's not going to be a whole lot left so we ended up picking up another body for i don't know like 600 bucks something like that and it's got some work that needs to be done but not near like that so as soon as he finishes up with this then we'll probably go ahead and, and remount the engine on there um, put the whole thing back together and then bring the that other body back over uh, do whatever it needs and then set it down and I think he's going to do a patina on it I don't think he's going to make it real nice he's just going to go with the kind of the the rusted up look which is very cool and then just clear coat it so anyway so uh, now next on my list is to go ahead and um, and make him one and then that way uh, I don't know what color he's going to want but we'll have matching knives out of that first car so talk about a memory knife now <clears throat> If you guys are into Volkswagens like we are, and you have any of these broken, uh, rusted up, greasy, whatever, um, and you want to send them to me or something like that, I'll have to. We could do a trade, or I can buy them off of you, or or whatever. And then if you want me to make you one of these cool memory knives, now this one right here, like I said, I made it to match my bug. All right, so it's got. <clears throat> the blue G10 uh, uh, handles and then it's got the shadow pivot right in there so the pivot pin is 3 seconds of an inch thick but it goes through the middle of one of these little bitty pivot bushings okay and that just stiffens everything up so I mean I can make them real nice and simple like that or if you have I mean, you can, with these memory knives, you can go as wild as you want. I mean, we can use, you know, the springs from your old bug or my old bug, either way. Um, we can use, uh, you know, your favorite t-shirt. Of course, I have to cut it up and layer it with epoxy, you know, to make a handle material out of it. <coughs> we can do bolsters, you know, all kind of stuff. But these right here, the, the linerless and the bolsterless, they're just such a nice handy little pocket knife um, they just are so if you if that's something that interests you um, you can get on my website uh, keltoncutlery.com there's a contact information in there you can go ahead and shoot me an email um, or email me at uh, keltoncutlery at yahoo.com and uh, and we can get started on one or if you have some of these springs laying in the backyard or something like that and you want to get rid of them um, you know drop me an email and we can see if we can figure it out uh, I have no idea what shipping on that would cost, um, but they're just freaking cool, and uh, yeah. So I just kind of figured that that was something that's been on my mind now for oh about ten years, and I just finally finally finished this one out yesterday. So I'm gonna have to make a couple of more and and um, and just play with it and have fun. All right, so again, this is Joe Calton with Calton Cutler. You can visit me on the web, caltoncutler.com. Hope you enjoyed the video, and we will see you next time.